Hello, welcome or welcome back. This is the color palette that was chosen for me in a group that I'm in. It's really fun called the Rustic Pixie. And we are going to start with a white spray painted cup. I just like to start with the white spray painted cup. It helps when I'm going to be painting or anything to give us a nice base so we don't have to use too many coats of the colors that we're using. And I am just using some chalk paint here by Pop of Color, and I'm just going to be ombreing my base. It does not have to be perfect. It just has to have a colored base for our glitters to go on top of. So when we're doing a base colored ombre for the paint, the key is to keep the two colors that you're working on wet. So I start with a damp brush, not wet, just damp, and I use um, the two colors that we're using keep them damp or keep them wet. So when I switch from one color to the next, I don't jump right in and where I finished off, I don't go right up to that line and start the next color. I go just a little bit above it, lay the next color down, and then when I'm ready to blend my line, then I start working into that next color. And when you start working the colors together, you don't need a lot of paint on your brush because your paints are already wet and you can just kind of go light pressure, up and down and move them together. You're just blending them. So you're using soft pressure here, not too hard, and you're working with the wet paint and just blending them together. And I didn't switch my brush until I used two really different tones. Like I switched my brush when I went from the brown to the blue, but I didn't switch my brush when I went just from the nude to the brown because that was in the same like tone, like, you know, color kind of family. And if you need to, if you feel like your paint's starting to dry up on you a little bit, what I do sometimes is just dip half of it in one color and then the other half in the other color, and I'll just blend my line that way if I need to just get a little bit more paint on my brush. So just keep going back and forth until you're happy with your blend line. And remember, it does not have to be perfect because this is not our finished look. This is just a base for our glitter. So you do not have to get it blended perfectly smooth at all so just keep the paint wet if it starts drying a little bit on the next um, half when you're going to be moving into your next color i just throw a little bit more paint on there move into the next color and just do it again so keep it wet keep it flowing get it blended somewhat as best as you can so it doesn't have a super harsh line you know and then it's just the base for our glitter don't think too hard about it Okay, so I'm applying my glitter with epoxy method. So the thing with epoxy method, you want a small, small, small amount of epoxy, just like if you're applying Mod Podge or an adhesive on your cup, that's a really thin layer, right? So you do not want a lot of epoxy on your cup. So what I do is either I put a little bit right on the top or bottom of my cup, like a pea or dime size, and then I use just that amount and rub it all over my cup, or like you just saw me do, a really thin line on just one side of the cup. And I spread that around and it almost feels like you do not have enough epoxy on your cup and you need more you just keep taking your hand and smearing it and smearing it and smearing it and moving it around and then that way you have just a really thin 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 layer of epoxy just like as if you took your paintbrush and your Mod Podge and spread it on your cup because that's all you need is for something for the glitter to stick to okay so now for our ombre I'm going in with some chunkies and some pines I'm going to go cover my bottom with my chunky first and do just the rim first. I'm not slanting my cup yet. I'm just getting my rim covered. And I'm going to do a lighter sprinkle first. And I'm gonna slant my cup here, even though it doesn't look like I am, I am slanting it at an angle towards my hand that I'm holding it with. And I'm doing a lighter sprinkle first, just letting the glitter kind of fall down towards the opening. And now I'm gonna go um, not at an angle, I'm just holding it straight, sprinkling some of the next darker color chunky on, and then I will slant it a little bit to let it fall down onto the lighter chunky. Still a light sprinkle, we're not doing anything heavy just yet. And then I'm gonna go in with my finer colors, darker one first, and I'm just kind of filling in some of those gaps, going a little heavier now to fill in some of those gaps that the chunky didn't cover and I'm letting that kind of fall down into the lighter one so I am tilting it and you're kind of just going back and forth 
you know, with your tilt. And now I'm going in the other way, tilting it the other way to let it fall up into the teal. Like if this was just a two colored, you would do this just half and half. But since I'm doing four colors, I'm doing just the sections. And now I'm going in with my lighter fine and filling in those lighter gaps and I'm going in with a heavier sprinkle and I'm letting it fall into the brown color and getting all of the gaps that the chunky did not fill. Jeez, this one's like so hard to explain while I'm like watching this back. But yeah, just focus on laying your first chunky down straight without a tilt, little sprinkle, light sprinkle, and then start um, tilting. The tilt is really what is gonna help you really not get a line. And then go back with your um, uh, fine glitter and start tilting it more and start giving it a heavier sprinkle. So it's all about the tilt, the lighter sprinkle at first, and then getting in with a heavier sprinkle. And then once that's done, go ahead and tap it all down to make sure the chunky's laying flat and go ahead and give it a spray seal to make sure it's all sealed and give it a nice coat of epoxy until smooth and sand it. And then we're ready for our stencils. So I just typed out this saying that I thought was cute and cut it out on my stencil vinyl on my Cricut. It says, take time to coast. And then I found some starfish and some sand dollars on Creative Fabrica, and I just imported those onto my Cricut, and I cut those out as well on my um, stencil vinyl. Oh, and these little feet, those were also on Creative Fabrica. And can I just say, these feet, um, cutting those out and putting them on the cup, those those seriously were a pain in my rear, but I actually started to put those on without weeding them. I just like put them on the cup and then pulled the outline off after because those little tiny toes, those were so annoying. I'm just going to say that now. Once your stencils are in place, go ahead and spray paint your cup white. Once your white spray paint is completely dry, we're going to get just 99% isopropyl alcohol and we're going to get it on the cup in a generous amount. Like I just squirt it all over the cup and then have your heat gun nearby. I don't have it on a really hot and I don't have it on cool. I just kind of have it in a happy medium. And I lay my inks down and as you see, it just kind of runs over the alcohol. So it keeps it wet on there and it gives it a really nice pretty look. Um, and I take my heat gun to maneuver the alcohol inks and I just kind of take my heat gun and I go back and forth with my heat gun and the alcohol and you'll see me go back and forth with them to help move the inks around. So I'm just taking my heat gun and I'll kind of just aim it like towards the top of the cup then I'll turn it, turn it and aim it towards the bottom of the cup and just like at the angle that I kind of want to push the inks to and it is a little bit more difficult when it's on the slanted cup because it kind of just wants to run down to the middle and if you put too much ink on just take your alcohol and run it back over it because the alcohol will take the ink away and then if you don't have enough ink on just drop more ink on and just kind of play with it and see how much ink and then how much alcohol you want to squirt on and just kind of play with the alcohol and the heat gun and then if you're happy with where it is and where you like the inks are laying and then just like put your heat gun to it more and like if I liked where it was if I liked how that was laying you could just like keep the heat gun on it moving and it'll help dry it up where it is and since I wanted my blues up top and then I wanted like more of that sand look on the bottom that's why I am like kind of focusing on the blue top first so for the bottom sandy color, I just went and put some alcohol on there to kind of just get rid of some of that bluish color that got down there. And the colors I chose was like a warm brown color, a gold, and a white. And that color choice was really just like a shot in the dark and ended up working really well. And keep in mind the gold, you know how like it does float more on top and it it definitely did float <laughs> and at one point I totally thought I just totally ruined my whole entire cup because it really took away then I had to squirt more alcohol on top and then I ruined my teal part and I had to kind of go over the teal again like I did here and then it turned into like I thought a muddy mess but I 
just put more inks on, put more alcohol on, and ended up fixing that middle part. And then I went back and dried it out where I liked it with the teal and the blue again. And I took my heat gun and really kind of dried that portion out on the inks so it wasn't wet anymore. And then I went back and kind of focused on the bottom again and did the same process. Put some more alcohol on, put a little bit more of whatever color I was looking for in there. Like you see how my top is more dry now. So that helped me where it didn't float to the top anymore. I dried that top part out and it wasn't wet anymore with alcohol so it didn't float up to the top for me anymore. And that part helped a lot. So then once you're happy with your inks and your placement, let it just spin and dry. I let my inks dry just like overnight, 24 hours. And then I went and peeled up my peekaboos. I didn't touch them until the inks were completely dry. And we'll go ahead and pull up the peekaboos here. And then I never seal or like seal spray or like, you know, coat my inks before epoxy. I just let my inks dry 100% and then I go straight into epoxy and I've never had an issue. I've honestly never once uh, sealed my inks before epoxy. As long as the inks are 100% dry, you can go straight into epoxy. And I'm using really good quality inks. I love Jen's Crafted Gems inks, and I use some of the um, Tim Holtz inks, and I've never had an issue. And I won't bore you with all the line work because I didn't even want to sit through it when I was doing it. So I'll show you my little starfish though, how I just overlapped them. I left the top one fully lined, and I just um, cut the outline one after, or the bottom one after I placed it on pretty self-explanatory really but and I did not outline my feet lord I was not outlining those feet I think they were cute not outlined anyways <laughs> but here it is out in the bright sunlight to see all the pretty beautiful colors and that beautiful gloss shine and I was happy with it at the end I really thought that sand looked just perfect and I really liked the way it all turned out with the darker blue and the teal and let me know what you think about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this one. I definitely struggled with explaining it all, but you can kind of watch and see how it's all done and you don't really need all the explanations, but I did my best. So let me know what you think and thanks for watching it. Mm -hmm.